Hello, welcome to our channel. In this video, we will look at how we can solve some linear inequalities. Let's look at these two things here. So on the left side is x plus six equals 10. And on the right side is x plus six greater than 10. Now, just by looking at this equation on the left side, we can tell right away that this the value of x must be four for this to be satisfied because four plus six is 10. So x must be four. X can have only one value and that is four in this case. Now, if you look at this one here, if you put four for x, it doesn't work because four plus six is 10 and this is not true. 10 is not greater than 10. But if you put uh, like five for x and five plus six is definitely greater than 10, that works. Not just five, if you put six for x, then six plus six is 12, which is greater than 10. That also works. If you put three for x, then we have three plus six greater than 10, it doesn't work. So it looks like there are few values that do not work and there are few values that work. And you can easily find more numbers by just trying that work in this sentence here. So if you put 10, then you have 10 plus six, which is definitely greater than 10. So X can have values like, just from our experiment here, we can have five for X, we can have six for X, we can have 10 for X, and we can find many more. So for example, one more, we can have 4.5 for X because 4.5 plus six will be 10.5, which is definitely greater than 10. So 4.5 also works and a lot other values also work. So it looks like these two values do not work from our experiment and these values, they all work for X. So now we see that changing this symbol, this equal symbol to this greater than symbol makes a lot of difference. So in this case, we have just one fixed solution. Here we have a range of solutions. So whenever we have a sentence like this one, a mathematical sentence like this one, we call that an inequality. And a linear inequality in one variable X is a statement containing these as its verb. So in this case, we just look at an example with this one. So similarly, we can replace this by the other ones also. So this one is less than, this one is less than, that one is less than or equal to, this is greater than, and this is greater than or equal to. So it is basically like a linear equation with this equal sign replaced by one of these symbols, less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. Solution of a linear inequality is usually a range of values like we saw here. We got a few numbers over here. So these all are solutions. 4.5, 5, 6, 10, they all are solutions. And these solutions can be written using intervals or displayed on a number line. And to see how to display on a number line or how to write as an interval, please look at our other video. Okay, so next we will see how we can solve linear inequalities. So just like with solving linear equations, solving linear inequalities involves isolating X on one side by adding and multiplying numbers to both sides or subtracting or dividing numbers to both sides. When solving linear inequalities, one thing we need to be careful about is if you are multiplying both sides by a negative number, then we need to reverse the symbol of inequality. For example, if you have this, and if you multiply both sides by a negative number, then we get inequality like that one, and vice versa. So we will look at what we mean by this exactly in our examples next. So here is our first example. Write the solution using interval notations and display it in a number line. Okay. So we have x plus six less than or equal to 10. Our goal is to isolate x. So we have x 
Well, to isolate X, we can subtract six from both sides. So X plus six minus six is simply X on this side. This tenor equal to 10 minus six is four. So this is the solution. X less than or equal to four is the solution. And we can easily put this on a number line. So if you put zero here and four here, so we are looking at all the real numbers less than or equal to four, including four. So since we include four, we will draw a solid dot here and we look at all these numbers. So these are all the numbers less than or equal to four. So this is the solution represented on a number line. And if you want interval notation, so we have, we start at negative infinity and we go all the way up to four. And we have a square bracket here because we are, we are including four. And so this solves this first example. Let's look at the next one now. We have one minus three X greater than 10. We want to solve this one. Again, our goal is to isolate X on one side. For that, we can first subtract one from both sides. So we have negative three X, one minus three X minus one is negative three X greater than nine. We still need to do some work to isolate X on one side. We need to divide both sides by negative three. Negative three X over negative three is X. Now, since we are dividing by negative three, which is like multiplying by negative one third, then we need to flip the sign. So this becomes X less than negative three. So over here, we said multiplied. It works in the same way if we divide also. So this is the solution. X less than negative three is the solution. Again, we can put this on a number line. So if zero is here, negative three can be somewhere over here. So we are looking at all real numbers less than negative three and not including negative three. So we draw a open dot here to indicate that we are not including negative three. And this is the solution. So if you want to put this on a number line, negative infinity is at the far left. So we start at negative infinity and we can go all the way up to negative three and not include negative three. So this is the solution. Okay, we are done with this example. Let's look at the next one now. We have one minus three X greater than or equal to 10, which is very similar to the previous one. Let's still go through this one. So we have one minus three X minus one, minus one, we subtract one from both sides. One minus three X minus one is simply negative three X greater than or equal to 10 minus one is nine. And to isolate X, we can divide both sides by negative three. But when you do that, this sign will flip. So we get X less than or equal to negative three. So this is the solution. We can again put it on a number line, zero is here, negative three is here. This time it says less than or equal to negative three. So we can include that value, negative three. And we are looking at all the numbers to the left because we have less than or equal to negative three. So these are the numbers less than negative three and we include negative three. So again, we can write it in an interval. So we start at negative infinity and we can go all the way up to negative three and we can include negative three. So we use a square bracket here. So this is the solution. We are done with this example. Let's look at the next one now. All right, so this one, which looks a little bit more complicated. Let's work on this one now. So we have uh, three times two by five minus three X on this side. 
and one third x plus two on, on the right side. So the first step here can be to di distribute this three. So when you do that, we have three times two by five, which is six by five minus three times three x, which is nine x less than one by three, x plus two. Okay. So this one looks much simpler because we don't have any parentheses here. Now the next step is to try to get rid of these numbers in the denominators. So one way to do that is just multiply both sides by whatever number we have in the denominator. We want to get rid of that five. So let's just multiply both sides by five and see what that gives us. So five times six by five is six minus five times negative nine X is negative 45 X less than one third times five is five by three and X as it is plus 10. Five times two is 10. At least we got rid of that denominator five. Next, we need to get rid of that denominator three. So multiply both sides by three. I'm going to write that up here. So three times six is 18 minus three times 45 is 135 X. So three times 45 X is 135 X less than five X over three times three. So five by three times three is five. So we have five X here plus 30, plus 30. So this is what we get. Now this is a nice linear inequality. We need to isolate X here. So we can subtract five X from both sides since we want all the X terms on the left side. That will help us get that five X to the other side. And you can subtract 18 from both sides because we want all the constants on the right side. So when you do that, 18 minus 18, that goes away. Negative 135 minus five is negative 140. We are left with 140 X on this side, less than five X minus five X, that goes away and 30 minus 18 is 12. So we are left with 12 over here. The last step, we can divide both sides by negative 140. So just divide both sides by negative 140. But whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, the sign will flip. So this will become greater than. So on the left side, we have just X greater than negative 12 by 140. So this is the solution. So we can simplify this little further. We can reduce this fraction 12 by 140. Let me write that here. So we get X greater than negative as it is. So if we divide top and bottom by four, 12 over four is three on the top and 140 over four would be 35. So it really reduces to three over 35. All right, so this is our solution. Again, we can put this on a number line and put it in, a, in an interval notation. So let's quickly do that. So we can draw a number line and we can locate zero somewhere. And this number negative uh, three by 35 is some negative number right here. So the solution is X is greater than this number. So we don't include this number because it's strictly greater than, and we look at all the real numbers to the right of that number. If infinity is at this end here, then our solution in interval notation will look like negative three over 35 comma infinity. So this is the solution. All right, so we are done with this example.
And we have one more example here, which is an application example. So it says in an standardized test with passing a score of 162, scaled a score is given as S of N equals 100 over 53 N plus 100, where N represents the number of problems answered correctly. For what numbers of problems answered correctly will a student exceed the passing score? So it says exceed the passing score. That means whatever score the students get must be greater than 162. And the score the student gets is given by this function. So we must have this function greater than 162. So this is the inequality representing the situation. Now, all we need to do is solve this inequality. So first we can subtract 100 from both sides. So we have 100 over 53N is greater than 62. And next we can multiply both sides by 53. so that we can get rid of that denominator. So that will give us 100N on this side because 53 times 100 by 53 is 100, greater than 62 times 53, which comes out to be 3286. So we get 100N greater than 3286. I'm going to copy this up here. 100N greater than 3286. And next we can divide both sides by 100. So that way we get N greater, greater than 32.86. So the number of problems answered correctly must be greater than 32.86. So that means we must need N to be at least 33 since N represents the number of problems. So if you answer 33 problems correctly in this test, then you will exceed the passing score of 162. All right, so we are done with this example also. And this is all I have put together for this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.